out of Shittim with two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came to a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged, or shall I say, stayed there. So many of us in here today have become victims of unfortunate circumstances. Many of us have suffered some form of loss to some degree in our life. Some of us have lost friends. Some of us have lost loved ones. Some of us have lost our job. Some of us have even lost our savings. And to be honest with you, some of us have even lost our connection with God. And because of this great loss, many of us from the out, many of those from the outside have deemed that you will be a failure and you are not fit to become successful or a winner in whatever it is that you suffered loss from. Many of us today have individuals and situations that have been specifically designed to destroy our purpose. For the Bible tells us in the book of Ezra, Ezra says that the enemy has literally hired counsel to frustrate our purpose. That's one of the reasons why you've been going through the trials that you've been going through. It's, it's because of the fact that the enemy has seen what's next. And he's not, he's not focused on what's now, but he's focused on what's next. The, the enemy has hired counsel to frustrate your purpose. Tap somebody and say he's hired somebody to frustrate your purpose. <laughs> See, actually, oftentimes, we become focused on the situation. But the enemy is focused on your purpose. He's not concerned about where you are right now. He's not focused on how strong you are right now. Because where you are right now really is not strong enough to be who God is calling for you to be. You must understand that the enemy is not concerned about your past accomplishments. But instead the enemy is more focused on what you're going to do next. The enemy understands something that many of us don't even quite understand as Christians, the enemy understand that as long as there is breath in your body, there's still purpose in your life. As long as there's breath in your body, there's still purpose in your life. And so instead of the enemy being concerned about what you have done, he's more concerned about what's coming up next. You ought to tell somebody there's purpose in my life. What, and what you, what you must understand is when people understand that there's purpose in your life, and, and you sometimes have those haterades and, and those hater blockers that are sitting around you, those that, that are just hating on every circumstance of your life, when, when they understand that there's really purpose in your life, what begins to happen then is uh, when you begin to fail at situations, the enemies of your situations begin to celebrate prematurely what's happening in your life. Uh, but they begin to you are failed at this. They begin to celebrate the fact that you were not able to do that. They begin to celebrate the fact that you seem to be broke, busted, and disgusted. They begin to celebrate the fact huh, that you seem to be lonely and all by yourself. They begin to celebrate the fact that you lost your job because they're haters from the beginning. But what you must understand is that when there's purpose in your life, it does not matter what comes your way. It does not matter what's going on in your life. When purpose is upon your life, no matter what take place. When you have purpose designed for you, when God has placed something on the inside of you, it don't matter what demon, what devil, what, what demonic force comes against you, but when God has purpose set in your life, it ain't nothing that anybody else can do about what God has already established. Oftentimes, you spend so much time going 